Okay, so if you save and run this code, um, I'm going to inspect it so you can see it. I'm going to open my Chrome browser and go to ins more tools, inspect device. There's my device, and there's my device right there. I took a photo of myself, and the class then was attached. After the fact, it showed the photo, and then it did dot class name equals blah, and then it resized my photo because my CSS is 75% the size of the screen, I suppose. If you got any error messages, again, check that console output. I mean, if it didn't work, check the console output to see what you might have misspelled. Let me pull my code up again. But it was setting here, in this case, yes, capital N. When do we do it? When do we do not? I try to point it out when we do and we don't. But sometimes we don't, just like on click right there. And here we definitely do, because that's what the specification says. And so at that moment, we dynamically manipulated the object and added a class name, which we called image class size, which is over here. And the image is 75% is, um, of the size. Now in my case, it displayed it on the same line as my button. I wanted it below my button. Well, I could go write some, uh, change my code a little bit in the HTML, put it in its own paragraph, for example, because images are uh, line, uh, are inline level elements, and I want this image on its own line, so that would be a block level element, perhaps. So maybe all I really need to do here, because I'm already attaching this CSS, let's try this. I'm going to say display block have it display as a block level element that should force it to its own line. We'll leave the photo button on its own and then the photo itself on its own line, block level. Um, that'll probably display it very close to the button, maybe a little bit of uh, margin around the photo. Uh, Let's try 1M. Give ourselves one unit of space around every around that photo. 1M unit. Save and run it. And uh, hopefully that picture should you know be pretty good size, 75%, and then on its own line, with a little bit of margin giving you some breathing room between the picture and the button. I have to do this run every time. It's not dynamic, unfortunately, that whatever change you make automatically shows up on the device. You have to recompile. But subsequent times should be faster because most of the code is the same. Notice all of those say up to date. So every time is a little bit faster. If you do have a web camera on your working device, your laptop, you might do taco run browser and that way you might even be able to run it even faster from the browser but you need a web camera. So again, a little inconvenient but I have to reinitialize my my console here. So inspect that again. Get the photo. It becomes inactive because I have to get the camera app. And take a photo and accept it. Brings it back in. There it is. It's a little off center, but that's other things I can play with. And it's on its own line because of display block. There's a little bit of space right there because of margin 1M. It's a little off center, but I think probably other things are conflicting built into the template. No error messages. And so what I changed was simply the actual CSS here. I didn't need to change anything else. So everything in its place and a place for everything. A file with my CSS, JavaScript to implement it, HTML file to set up the basic structure. I could do this by having image in my HTML. Image class equals image cam size. Done. 
but I want to show you that via a, via uh, JavaScript, it's simply we can attach any class to any object by changing the class name property to the particular CSS rule. All right, did everyone get a photo to display, maybe a little smaller on your device? If you're running on a virtual device, it's a little anticlimactic. You get a little green square running around in the wilderness, or a little red one when it gets mad. Then you take a photo, and then that little green square appears on your screen. That's it. That's the emulated camera on the emulator. The cool thing about using the emulator, though, is when you set up the emulator, you could set it to use your device's web camera. So it would take a real photo from your real device in the emulator. And that's why using a real device is often preferable. Any questions so far? Have any of you tried to see, where is that photo saved? Have any of you gone out of your app and maybe gone into your gallery? and seeing it, if it's saved there. If you haven't, don't bother yet. It's not being saved to the device yet. It's just floating around in the memory of the app. And if I were to, you know, I went to the home screen of my device, I go, you know, I go back to the app, and it, uh, it's still there. But if I were to force quit my, my app, if I force shut it down, and I go back to the app, the data's gone. Uh, template. The data's gone because it was temporary. I'm loading up that same project again from the beginning. It's gone. And if I go look in the gallery, my photo album of the device, it's not there. Let's see how we can save the um, the photo actually to the device. Right now it's floating around in a variable basically um, until we clear memory when I quit the app. If we go back to the documentation on Cordova, And we back up to the camera. We back up to the camera section. Camera. Get the explanation. We scroll down. There will be a uh, kind static method. Okay, camera cleanup. Where did it go? Error success. Here we go. Camera options. There's no sub chapter here, apparently. Camera options. Here's these various options that we can add. We saw quality, which is a number, a whole number, not a fraction. Default is 50. We're seeing that in the code of JavaScript right here. Success callback, failure callback, comma, options in curly brackets. Curly brackets is a JSON object. JSON object is basically a syntax. Property, colon, value, comma. Property, colon, value, comma. Property, colon, value, comma. Until the last property, no comma. JSON format, we'll have a lesson on that later. It's one of the most important things to know in modern web design and web apps and such because everyone uses JSON format. Eventually, if we want to get advanced with, um, with our database, definitely. But let's say our app is built to retrieve data off of the Flickr database or used to retrieve data out of the Google Maps database. All of these services now are providing us data in JSON format. It's not that complicated to understand how it works. We'll have a lesson on it later. For us, this is JSON format, curly brackets, key value pairs. One key or one property is quality. Another property or key is destination type, colon. The documentation gives us all possibilities. 
destination type. So destination type, file URI is the default. Choose the format of the return value. File URI, just give me back the uh, file's address in storage. Uh, some of these are a little more complex, so you can click. It'll jump you down to show you a little bit more detail. If you click destination type, it jumps down a little bit. Camera.destination type. We have data URL possibility and file URI and native URI. In ours, we've got camera.destination type dot file URI. File URI return the file, such as some sort of path about where is it stored in the device. Other options are data URL, return a base64 encoded string. So return the data, return the, return the photo as a string of data, as numbers and letters and symbols. Um, notice that's not the default because that's going to make your app get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You're going to be storing the uh, photo data right in your app. Well, the user probably has an SD memory card or some other storage medium, so we, we, we're going to borrow that to save the photo to their memory card. Uh, we've also got native URI, return to native URI, example asset library. Um, both of these are very similar except that the syntax, show me the path to the image in the native format, show me the path to the image in a more sort of universal format. Backing up to the options again. There you've got your height and your width. We've got a way to resize our image data right at the moment we take the photo. Again, if we resize it to those pixels, it's those pixels. We've lost, it might have been a 10 megapixel image. If we resize it here, it's going to be a 1 megapixel. And that's it, we've lost the data. These other ones uh, don't quite worry. Orientation, here we go. Save to photo album. Save the image to the photo album on the device after capture. This is a Boolean. What does a Boolean mean? True or false. You have two options. A Boolean is, it's either true or it's false. That's it. So we need to add the property save to photo album and set it to true. This doesn't appear to say a default. In our case, it's in my case, my device is not saving it. I went to the camera roll and it didn't save it. So perhaps your device would do default save true. To make sure, I'm going to copy that little bit there because it has to be spelled that way. Save to photo album, capital T, capital P, capital A. I need to add that option to my camera capture. Line 18 and 19, we have quality option, comma, destination type, no comma, because it was the last item in the JSON object. We need one more item here. So comma, <clears throat> after file URI, we can keep it on one line or maybe break it, enter to the next line, just for readability. And then we need save to photo album, colon, space, true. It's the last item of our option, so no final comma. Technically, we should be able to leave this without a space or a space there. It's a little loose right there. I like the space like that, but you can leave no space if you want. And that should then save the photo, it should display the photo and save it to the device's camera roll or gallery or whatever it's called on your device. I'm going to save that. Make sure it's spelled properly, of course. Save to photo album. Run the latest version of my code. 
should behave the same as before. But then what you want to do is go find the the photos app of your device or the gallery app or whatever device it calls it. And then check your device to see that the photo is actually saved to the device. It's still temporary for the app, but it's saved permanently to the device. I'll explain that in a moment. So, we'll see the path in a moment, actually. It's being saved somewhere into the device. We will see that path in just a moment. But what I'm just going to check for the moment is, uh, I'm going to take a photo. I'm going to take a photo of myself, maybe. Take a photo. I'm going to take a photo. It shows up in my app like before. That's nothing new. But now I'm going to exit my app. In my particular device, I'm going to go over to my apps. And in mine, I have a gallery app. You may have Google Photos, you may have Gallery, something. I'm going to go to my gallery on my device. And then I've got a bunch of uh, albums and such. And there's one album, in my case, called Pictures. I already see a preview of my photo. I'm going to tap there. There's my photo. So it is permanently saved to my device. So it did get saved to my device. It's visible in my app, it's saved to my device. Well, I'm curious where it's stored, its path, and all of that. We can find that out right here. Um, function on success has an image URI. It has a path because we have the option on top here, <coughs> retrieve the file's address, the URI. You probably heard of URL. It's more hip now to say URI. So the file path, we said the destination of this photo is a path. What's the path? It's encoded in this object, and we're saying the source of this image is this path. If only there were some way to see that somehow. Yeah, console.log image URI. Or much more obviously, alert image URI. Get in the habit of whenever you see any sort of parameter being passed into a function, what happens if I look at it in the console? What happens if I alert it? Something's something's coming, something's being created. We can usually console output it or alert it. At worst, it'll just say object, which then you can further inspect. At best, it'll give you some meaningful data. So one or the other. You can do both if you want to be obvious about it, but for the moment I will just do a console output. Save that and run it. That will give you a file path. That will give you a file path. It'll display it in the console, so that means we need to run it in the... Um, we definitely need to view it either in the Android device monitor or the Google Chrome uh, dev tool. Let's see. I'm going to compile that, and then I'm going to inspect the device.
Okay, so I'm going to take another photo. Took that photo, shows up on screen, looking at my console. There's my path. On my device, under storage, zero pictures, image. There's the profile name of that graphic. It's just a path to a graphic on my device. Yours may be different. Most likely it'll be different. Everyone's got a different device, probably. So we're getting a file URI, return file URI. I'm curious what does native URI look like, so I'll give that a quick shot. Uh, right here. We were saying use native URI instead, I mean use file URI, just to see what it looks like. I'll set that to native URI. I don't know if that'll break other things. I usually use file URI, but I'm just curious to see what that'll look like. Spelled that way, of course, because it's uh, that's what the spec says. photo of a different, I took a shot of a different photo. In my case it's the same result. Native URI and file URI in my case are exactly the same. So all of this time that we've been talking, we've been learning about the basic building block for us to take a photo with our app. It's not that many lines of code, but that's just a basic building block. What about if we wanted to display five at a time? Right now it's only showing one photo at a time. If we wanted it to display like a little gallery or with an animation or what about if you want to retrieve a photo that we've already taken? Uh, again, this is the tip of the iceberg. If we wanted to retrieve a photo instead of taking a photo, we would look at the documentation, and somewhere here it'll tell us what do we need to do to retrieve a photo that's already been saved instead of taking a new photo. And I see over here that there's also a type of media for video rather than picture, picture source, here we go, camera, picture source type, photo library, camera, saved photo album. So if we wanted to actually retrieve from the photo library, we would need the picture source um, the option where we've had save to photo album true.
picture source type. And there we do source type. Right now we've got it set to uh, take a photo because the default is camera. Set the source of the picture. We said camera by default. If we add another option, source type, colon, and we have a few possibilities of source type. This one where it's a number, well, that's a number. This one that it's a Boolean, it's true or false. These that are something like picture source type, when you click there, the possibilities are photo library, camera, or saved photo album. Same as photo library for Android. So um, save to photo album true comma because I need a new property which is source type colon photo library that should retrieve a photo from the um, photo library of the device Source type photo library. The options are default of uh, camera, photo library, save to photo album. I'll run that and test it out. Okay, let's see. I'm going to tap the photo button now. Okay, so I guess we have to use the actual number. So instead of the word photo library, I guess we use a zero. Um, I'm going by what's already. Have you tested it, or is that possibility? Uh, there's a, there's a code snippet, uh, oh yes, so, yeah. There we go. To have the full, the full code. Camera to picture source. Okay, there we go. That 
seems more correct based on the example. Camera dot picture source dot photo library. I'm sure we can use the zeros and the ones in a slightly different way. But that seems to make sense and that works. So that should uh, open up the camera library. There we go. So I, I tapped the photo, it went over to my devices library, it went over to recent folder. Tab is inactive because I'm in a different app. Let me load up a different uh, photo. Didn't load on screen yet, but I'm getting some console. Now notice also it's got the um, console output. Uh, refuse to load image content, whatever, because it violates the CSP. Okay, that's fine that that error is coming out here. Um, I'm trying to load a photo from the library. I'm almost there. What it's saying, though, it's violating the content security policy. We're going to touch on that much more uh, as time goes on. But basically what this is saying is something in my app is preventing potentially unsafe content from loading up. And that's being defined by the index HTML, line 8, content security policy. Here we're saying, what are we allowing to load up? We've got a meta tag in the HTML file, content security policy. You can actually go to content security dash policy.com for the full details about what this thing is but this was designed to prevent some uh, cross-server scripting some to help make our apps more secure especially if we're running HTML code to make our apps so what this line is saying which we'll get into more detail later what are the possibilities of content we can load up the syntax about this thing they should have done a better job of explaining or showing what this is what this means because we've got a we've got a section of default source which goes until this semicolon right here then we've got a section of style source which goes into the next semicolon then we've got a section of media source and then it ends i would have liked it that they had something like default source colon self is okay comma, data is okay, protocol, comma, gap protocol, comma, that web address, comma, unsafe eval, end. But it, it, they didn't think about writing that, or maybe it's not possible, to have written it that way. So you have to look at it in terms of what are our default sources, then they're listed, then semicolon. What are the style sources? What, where can we load style sheet content from? We can load it from. We can load it from uh, self within uh, within the self of our own project, I believe, and in unsafe inline in that it's inline CSS written on each element. And then media, we can load media from anywhere basically. So never here did we mention we can open or we can access 
something with a protocol of content colon etc. So it's saying refuse to load image whatever from content colon whatever because it violates the following content security policy. Default source does not mention anywhere content. Note we do not have an image source declaration. It wasn't explicitly set. So we're using default source. So we need to add content colon to either default or create a new image source declaration. I think for the moment it'll be easier to use the default source because if we set up an image source we have to specify all possibilities of image source which might be self, inline, inline unsafe, etc. So I'm going to give it a try with simply content colon to default source. So what I mean is we've got default source, we're saying self is good, data is good, gap is good, HTTPS address is good, and then unsafe eval. I don't believe the order of this matters, but I'll add it here before the end of that semicolon. It's all the default source stuff and then style source. I'm going to try there. Content colon. If I had a protocol of data colon, it could load. If I had gap colon, it would load. If I have this web address, it would load. And here I'm trying to load, let it load something from content. Run that. This content security policy, it's uh, very, uh, it's two things. It's that it's very helpful to keep your app safe, but it's very annoying you have to be very explicit and you have to say this is valid, this is not valid, we can use some wild cards and such. If we use too many of course then we're too insecure. Uh, so it's kind of like um, either or. Do you want to have security or do you want to have convenience? But let's see what I get out of that. My photo album is loading up. I'm going to select the photo. Photo loaded up because content is approved. And so it loaded up that particular photo from my album. So these are various explorations of um, using a camera, try different possibilities, here's from a folder or directly from the camera. If we wanted to set that bit back to the default, we can set camera pictures source type back to camera or remove it since it's the default. Um, we won't get quite into it, but we could be saving references to these files. We could be storing all of that in an array, for example. We could be storing that in local storage so that the app doesn't forget. We could be storing it in a database that we'll talk about later. We're still missing a lot of what we could do here. This, this is as far as we'll go for the moment with the camera because our app um, the SDCE app we're working on doesn't really use the camera. I suppose we could use it um, to take photos of things to store education-wise. But eventually our app isn't going to take photos. So we won't go further with the camera app. There's still more we could do with it, saving the data to the locations and all of that. That's something for you to explore because if your app needs to do to use the camera, well, here's the code, here's the documentation, we can get examples. I'm going to take a break.
then when we come back we'll um, talk about uh, getting the um, starting to get the project from last month into a taco project. What I'm gonna say before you go for the break is this camera thing that we're playing with it's just it's just a little test playing around thing uh, for the break make one more copy of your original template and uh, we're gonna use this one for real then for the rest of the course this one the 1011 I was just playing with I'm not even gonna save it I'm gonna put it in the network folder I guess if you want it but I'm not gonna save it myself I'm gonna make a copy one more time of my template when we come back we're gonna use it for real as our real app of the MySDCE project, and that's the one we're going to keep using for the rest of the course. Um, after the break, we'll, we'll do that. So it's 8.32, we'll be back at 8.42, but you should take the moment in the break to make a copy of your template one more time, and we'll use it after the break.